hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the puppy, and the brim. Just give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. I like going down to the fishing hole, my buddies and me, I'm old cane pole. Bake them hooks and wet them lines, it's the life I love so fine. It's almost supper time, you'd think the world was mine. And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Well, folks, I've got uh, here with me Bill Fuchs from Franklin, North Carolina, and Bob Williamson. And it wasn't my pleasure to go on this gorgeous trip. And I'm going to let Bob and Bill tell you what went on that. Now, you called me, Bob. You said, oh, don't you look at some video, Archie, and tell me what's going on here, uh, Bob. Well, we, we went down to Costa Rica, and i tell you what, it was really something. I, I hooked up. Fish within about two minutes of the time we started, and uh, old Bill over here is rigged up. He can tell you more about the boat and all. Now, how'd you get up with Bill Fuchs? Now, we're all taxidermist here, and uh, I know Bill, uh, he's a good customer. I bought a bunch of fish blanks off of us through the years, and uh, how in the world did you get way off down yonder, Bill? Uh, it ended up uh, something we family had done for years. We come from a bunch of adventures. We got to Costa Rica simply because we heard there was more billfish there than anywhere in the world. And I said, I'm going to go look and see. What's that Bob got on right there? Bob's hooked solidly right now on light tackle. He's got a big Pacific sail. Uh -huh. Probably a 90 to 110 pound fish. Uh, we can expect each day to raise 10 to 15 of these fish per day per boat. Goodness gracious alive, you think that won't make your heart beat? Just I'm look at that. You, I'm Bob, what, right was now. You, what was you thinking at that moment right there? Well, I was all smiles. Well, was this your first encounter with this kind of field fish? Look at that. No, I've been to Mexico, but it's the first time I've ever caught them like this. I mean, we go and troll and troll and troll and not catch anything. Maybe one or two sightings a day, but here it was just solid action. Now, how did you get up with Bill? I mean, uh, now, Bill, your folks has been in the guide business for years, hasn't it? My father was an outfitter in South America for about 40 years. And I uh, growing up, we were all pretty much uh, outdoor-oriented and adventure-oriented. And uh, the fishing being raised on the Florida Keys was something dear to heart. And uh, when I found a place where I could catch sailfish all day long, I said, i got to go check this out. And now, we, now have you, you've gone in behind his footsteps. Now, you've been a guide now, too, had for a We've worked for 20 years now in the Rocky Mountain region and, of course, in Central and South America with fishing and hunting and bird watching and mountain climbing and anything that people want to do in that part of the country. Now, who's that with us there? That's old Harold Sharp. He's, he's an old boy that went with us. He, it's the first time he'd ever been, and I, I tell you, he he got a grand slam, got a marlin sailfish and a rooster fish. And First rooster time he'd ever been. Oh my god. Nice and that's all time, don't I think he got a marlin right He's here. He's hooked to a good marlin right now. I see. We're fishing about 15 miles offshore inside of land. We're at about 3,000 foot of water. There's a shelf there. 3,000 feet? Yeah, it's a deep shelf that breaks quick there. And, and with this upwelling current, we find tremendous herds of sailfish. The largest concentration of Pacific sailfish in the world. Oh my. Found off now, this now, what area. town are y'all in down there? Well, we, everybody field. goes to San Jose. And from San Jose, we traveled to a remote north coastline, uh, which is away from the crowds. And this is why the fishing is still as good as it is. I see. In other words, you fly down there to the closest airport, right? Exactly. We fly into San Jose, and then we have to travel by vehicle, which we furnish all day, travel ground transfers to get you to the beach. In other words, a guy can come, they can get up with you, and you can tend to everything and put them in the boat and we, take them fishing the whole whole smear, right? Even the sliced pineapple on the boat's fresh that morning. Oh, we cover, my we God, cover all the fresh pineapple. Goodness gracious. Now, I've noticed that when I was editing this, I look at that it. thing, jump, look at that. Is that, is, that a, is that a marlin? That's or his something? first marlin. First marlin. Yeah. Blue marlin. Yeah, I see. The gentleman really didn't realize how exciting this was. He thought he just had another big fish. We have to keep telling him, you've got a blue marlin. <laughs> well, I want, I want to tell the folks this, too, now. I wasn't on this trip. Look at that thing. And Bob here, uh, he's, he's not a professional cameraman, per se, <laughs> but he you does what break. I thought was a pretty dead gum good job here of, of getting all this action for you folks here. And uh, we was able to, you know, rework some of it and edit it on in. And this is a blue, huh? Blue? What yeah. size you reckon he is? What do you think, Bob? 350? 350. Yeah. So good there. solid fish. Uh, our average billfish for that area. We catch mostly blues and blacks. We do get a few stripes. This is a young boy, 12 years old. His parents, he's up. 
diehard fisherman. His parents wanted him to experience world-class big game fishing, so we took him under our wing and took him with us. And the boy caught his first marlin on this day. We had two marlin boated that day, and I think seven sailfish we boated. Goodness gracious. And released, of course. Now, uh, they release a lot of them, too. We release 99%. We're, we know that the future of this resource lies in the releasing of them. It's extremely important. Well, now, the ones y'all boat and bring in, now, they smoke them things down there, don't they? Well, and make, uh, they eat them when they bring them in, don't they? If the fish dies, yes. Yeah, He's consumed, but we very seldom kill one. I very see. seldom. This is our fleet of boats. We've got five 32-foot Morgans. Moored on the open Pacific there in a very oh, tranquil. That's pretty right there. That's a view from Bob's motel room there where yeah, he was staying there. There's a bunch of bait fish yeah. and birds feeding on him. Well, I mean, those, those big fish are right Large there. Large concentration here. We uh, pulled up to these gentlemen to trade cold beer for cold shrimp. And they, <laughs> well, they, you got your bait off them, right? Yeah, we, well, what we did, we got something to eat. A, a, a deep water shrimp, 3,000 feet of water here. A very unusual shrimp at 3,000 feet depth. I couldn't believe they could control it, but they did. 3,000 feet? They were eating them raw like they were peanuts. These mates got excited about the, the having these red shrimp to eat. I'd never seen a shrimp like that. Did y'all eat them raw yeah, too? Delicious. Delicious. My goodness. They were good. Boy. Here we are, calm water, light tackle. He's got him on a 30 here. Uh, man, that's maybe a 50. We've got another good sailfish. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Goodness. Hey, look at that thing. Walk, like Bob. This, this look at that, Bob. Too. All day long. Good. Takes about 20 to 30 minutes on average to catch these fish. Uh, sailfish are nice because we get one off, we go get another one, we get one off, we go get another one. Oh, that's good. Cool. Look, at, look at that thing. Clear oh, water, oh. calm seas, oh. sunshine, and oh, excitement. Goodness gracious alive. You'll that never is, be bored on that, this now, trip. Now, what time of the year are we down there now? We cut the heart out of the season. We fish it from May through August at the critical moon phases that we've ironed out. We know you're going to catch fish. So you're not going to take nobody. If they call you and say, and they say, I can come then, and say, no, that ain't what no, I want you. I want you to go when it's perfect. When it's perfect. What's your phone number down there? Uh, the area code 704-524-3677. I got you. That's in Franklin, North Carolina. That's Wilderness Taxidermy and Outfitters. Wilderness Taxidermy and Outfitters. Boy, that's a gorgeous fish. You're coming with me next year now, aren't you? Well, you we got me all nervous when I, when I was editing this thing, Bob. That, <laughs> look, look at that gorgeous <laughs> thing. Look at that. You're a man that appreciates big fish and oh. good times, and this is the place for it. It's time to go Boy. right now. Yeah, y'all just pull it right in that hole right in the back of the boat, don't you? Only because he's got a $30 lure in his mouth. I see. Oh, <laughs> that's gorgeous. I mean, that, that was a sight anybody sold. Who we got winding right there, Bob? That's me. Oh, there you are. You're going to change shirts on us. Master How many days did you stay down there, Bob? We fished for four days, Archie. I mean, we had a blast. I don't know what this is. Right? That's, that's a marlin there, isn't it? That may very well be the, the marlin that you caught there, Bob. All right, now go over this, Bob. You catch sailfish, Pacific sailfish. Yeah, and then there's blue marlin, there's black marlin. Uh, there's one guy caught a striped marlin. Striped marlin? Yeah. yeah. And uh, look how lit up this fish is. They look, yeah, when, when we talk about lit up, they, they take on that real uh, phosphorescent blue. Look, and you can see it right there. Uh, on, there it is, there across the back. The look at his tail. See, his tail's lit up too Excellent right there. Good see, a lot of times people on these mounted fish, they don't they see the blue on the tail, but when they're real excited, they, they take on that real iridescency, don't they? Uh, absolutely, fellas. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. You know, that's just like a human being blushing. They they got to be alive to do it, and they get mad and they light up. The nice uh, who part we got going right here now. This is our young angler. He was 12 years old, a big boy. But the nice part about this, you don't have to be a knowledgeable angler. We're going to have everything set for you. The rods will be balanced to your abilities and capabilities. And uh, we've got mate and captain, and everybody pitches in. This is what makes bill fishing so exciting. It takes a man on a chair, a guy to help the winder. It takes another man to work the line and the gaff if we're going to well, kill that a That little fish. boy is 12 years old, and he's got probably 150 pound sailfish right there. Oh, look at that thing. thing. Look at him go. Yeah, that's oh, quite a thrill was... for a young man, I tell you. Or an old man like me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bob, what do you do for an encore when you take a 12-year-old down there, huh? <laughs> These fathers out there want to take them on, a, on, a, on an exciting trip. Would you recommend this? Now, you, you guide a lot of stuff, don't you, Bill? Absolutely. I've had my 10-year-old son down there, Jason. He was with us when we caught an 800-pound black. Oh, and my. It, when he went back to school and told the people in the mountains that he was on a boat that caught an 800-pound fish, they laughed at him. But uh, the boy was there. He did it just like this young angler is doing here. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. don't have to be a big, strong man. You just need to have a little determination and go down and experience the finest fishing in the world. Now, what else do you guide to now, uh, Bill? Well, we run bear hunts up in eastern Canada, and then, of course, we're in the Rocky Mountain region. We've been out there for 20 years with our hunts and fishing trips in the high country out there. I see. So we try to do things that this is the rugged coastline. This is what scares me. We're sitting in there editing this thing, and I saw y'all backed up against them big old yeah. rocks. 
How in the world you keep your boat off them rocks? The captain won't let the wheel alone. Oh, he has to keep a good hand on the wheel, but what we're doing, we're pulling a live bait, a five pound bonita, and dropping him next to these rocks. Oh. Believe it or not, you're apt to catch black marlin. Blues won't come in that close. Black marlin will rake these rocks. They'll come right up on the rocks to eat bait. We catch yeah. sailfish. What course, is that back there now? Another sail? Probably another sail, yeah. Yeah. Now, we caught Dorado, these uh, dolphins, this is, I mean, boatloads of them. I mean, yeah. it, it's just. Now, what about they, they, they eat those down there? Absolutely. Don't they? What do they call them? What do they make Mahi, mahi, or Dorado? Dorado. I mean, everywhere you go, they got a different name for them, so yeah. I get a little confused when I'm out there. The world record was caught right here. The existing world record Dorado was caught right here in the Gulf of Papagayo on well, the north coast that, of Costa Rica. Of that fish 87 and a quarter. Boy, that's a big one. Look that's at that. Nice Look at that. Nice fish. Here, it, Archie? Man, nice. that just makes my heart jump every time I see one of them out there. Bill's taking an underwater picture of Getting a few right shots at the boat there. Good. A little dangerous here. I had a mate pulled out of a boat three years ago and cut his leg back. The fish actually pulled him free of the boat. Well, now, his job is real important, too, isn't it, Bill? I mean, he's got the, when he puts his hand on that wire there, you, I mean, that fish may still be pretty, well, he is green because y'all release him. Very green, and we want him green so that he doesn't die. We don't want to fight him until he's fatigued and dies. We want to get a green fish up, Bill him, secure him enough to retrieve the hook or in the lure, or in a lot of cases, we'll cut the hook. Okay. Uh, and, and watch the fish swim. If the fish is too weak, we'll grab him by the bill and tow him behind the boat for a period of time until he's revived. And it's a real satisfying thing to watch him swim away. I see. Because we know we're going to see him again next year. And this boy but here, he knows, what he, next year. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. That's dude, Pepe, and he's as solid as a rock. Pepe. 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 Pepe's got suckers on his feet. He won't slide <laughs> off a sliding board. I, he can stand on that transom barefoot. <laughs> Now, who is this we got? Uh, that's me. I got my shirt off this time. That's I Bob up there. We, we got a double here. We got one coming up behind the boat fixing to eat. Double and triple hookups, very, oh, very common. Goodness. They travel in pods, these big sailfish do. And if we get one on, we always keep a bait ready to feed the second fish. I see. You, you know what? You, keep it, you don't keep it in the water, but you keep it handy. Yeah. I got you. Hey, okay. Archie, too, the weather down here is just great. He's been fishing down here, what, 11, 11 years now? 11 years and never lost a day of fishing. Goodness, that's just that's, that's, incredible. That's, it is incredible. This would be a rough day. Weather yeah. is never a factor. Don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about the fish. Just worry about what color hat you're wearing. Water is really beautiful down there. In other words, they don't have to bring nothing when they go with you do the beer. They, they just, show up with a tan up. lotion and a smile. That's we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> That's about as good as I've ever heard it. <laughs> now, Bill, what's your phone number again up there? It's area code 704 524 3677. I got you. And uh, how, how big a parties do you take? I mean, how many well, people do you take? We work with small groups. We do corporate groups, husbands and wife groups. Uh, business people. We like to put four anglers to the boat and we need every one of those people. They're all a viable role. Yeah. But 12 to 14 people is a good sized group. I keep it small and again, we cut the very heart out of the season. I mean, if just two people, it's me and, and my buddy went down there. Too much, you know, I mean, too much work on you. Huh? Two, two people have killed you. Oh, yeah, Beat yeah. you to death. I see. Because you got double hookups a lot of the times and it's just work. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's exciting work though. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of work you say I like right here. Yeah, your daddy worked all over South America for years. That's what he did. Yes, in the interior. He collected orchid plants in the interior of the Amazon region. and spent his, most of his adult life in that part of the world. What was he? Was he in the floral business? He was an explorer. Explorer. Just he an was adventurer. an adventurer. I see. He was just an adventurer who enjoyed, he basically exported orchids out of Central and South America. Oh, oh, wild animals. Yeah, he was in the pet like trade that. and he, we sucked gold out of the rivers for a while. That didn't pan out. No pun there. But it and he lived with those headhunters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is probably the single most exciting thing of all. Did he do just find we... this? Or, or no, he had never been to Costa Rica until I took him two years after we discovered it. Uh -huh. He was raised on the Florida Keys and had spent his life in the blue water there and he experienced excellent fishing there when it was still good. Uh -huh. uh, he enjoyed this. We were down there. He's not much on billfish. He's a meat man. He wants to catch big snapper, and we oh. got him. <laughs> well, now this particular show we did, y'all had some. Uh, I think a little bottom fishing, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot. But you tell me that the bottom fishing is awesome. It's down. phenomenal. Live bait, five pound live bait, sink them. You got to hook up every time. Yeah, about anything. Every right? time. Anything. Sharks, amberjack, rooster fish, which is the big snapper. Yeah, the big cabrero, oh. big grouper. That's 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 the snapper that's got the big old teeth like a dog. That's scary. Oh. Those oh, rooster yeah. fish or something else. Oh, they're nowhere. gorgeous yeah, things, Bob. Beautiful. I mean, you know, I, I we buy a lot of them from time to time that people bring in and uh, or they, you know, order reproduction of them. And uh, they're just a gorgeous fish. But I can't get over y'all just bringing in one another right big after sail another fish after another. After we use mono leader, makes life a little simpler for the fishing for us. We don't have to worry about getting cut and tangled. We get the mono leader, pull him up, unhook, and 
you try to get to hook out of the mouth, but it really don't hurt him because no. he'll rot it out anyway if you leave right. it in there, right? He'll rust it out. Rust it on out of there. Well, I'll boy, even that. kiss him on the head and let him go. Oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful fishing if I ever seen it. Now, Paul, how, how'd you get uh, hooked up with Bill? Well, uh, you know, he's a taxidermist too, and but he knew I loved deep sea fishing, and I've been deep sea fishing, you know, all over, and he's been telling me about dolphin. this for years, and, and I, like an idiot, I just didn't ever go down there with him, and finally, he weakened me, and I went, oh, and uh, boy, I tell you, I got, I'm booking my whole family next year. Now, you say you've got dolphin down there by the drove. You bet. That goes. That fish we won't release. That fish will be served that night along with fresh lobster, fresh shrimp, uh, open menu. You eat fresh seafood until you really well, swell Well, what up. you're saying is you can go down there even if you didn't like the fish, Ooh. and you can have a gourmet eating. And Bob, you said the water is real good to drink down there. I've always heard it's bad drinking water. Well, in Costa Rica, it's not like that. It isn't like some of those Latin American countries I've been to. I mean, the water's good. Food's good, the people like you. There's not all the uh, poverty like you see like in places in Mexico I've been. It's just a beautiful. Well, I went to Mexico and I couldn't stay off the commode for, yeah. I guess, a month. Then that ruins a good trip. And oh, here, that's boy. not a problem. That's not a problem. This is not a problem the entire trip. There's pure water the whole way right out of your tap. I carried my own water and everything down there, but <laughs> I, I must have got in, in somebody they wash something off or something but i got that amoeba bug down there <laughs> and i'm my whole party was was sick for a month and that's too bad that's that, too. that won't be a problem here here we're catching supper we stopped long enough to get enough good dolphin for everybody to have now a you're full saying you supper. can stop out there with live bait and just just catch all the fish you oh, absolutely you, know you, you can wear yourself out on the bottom if you want to bottom fish all day you better bring a truckload of sinkers we'll no worries they, they, they don't even they that most of these people don't even bottom fish. Do no, you? there'll be a few commercial men who will stop to catch small snapper for the market, uh, which they fix at night stuffed with lobster tails. It's a killer, but uh, no, the bottom's covered in good fish. It's amazing. It's just amazing. The ocean, if I had to describe this area of the Pacific, it is alive. alive. Virtually alive with everything. There's whales, there's whale sharks, there's sea turtles. It's, it's, it's just incredible. And you're talking about alive. just offshore, aren't you? Within, I, I've caught dolphin, mahi mahi, standing on dry ground. I've oh, stood on the beach goodness. and cast mirror lures to dolphin in the morning. Yeah. That's what happens there. This water is deep. Little old boy, he's catching a nice sailfish here now. Yeah. yeah and that, you'll be catching a dolphin one minute and a sailfish the next. A big old black mm -hmm. marlin come whipping by there. Yeah. I tell you, it's just... Well, let me ask you, I don't see any outriggers. Do y'all not use outriggers? Yeah, we do have riggers on the boat. Uh, again, we're shooting off a 32-foot boat, so we're not panning around probably picking the riggers up. Yeah, we're pulling four baits at a time. Look at that pulling boy, that sailfish. Look at that youngster. <laughs> Goodness, you think he ain't having fun? Uh, this kid that. experienced a, a lifetime of fishing in four days. He you know, really did. You know, it, they, these dads, a lot of them call me about what to do and where to go there. They can give them kids new cars and they can give them a pocket full of money. But when time goes by, the things that those kids, I know like with my daddy, the big things I remember was the times I was hunting and fishing with my daddy. And these kind of memories, you just can't you can't put a price on. You cannot price it. You're right, Archie, 100%. This is quality time. That's an experience that it, it's, it's very affordable, and it's absolutely something you and your son or That's family. Right. I'm, whole, I'm taking my whole family just for that very reason. Yeah, Bob's bringing his whole entourage. Now, now what there. about your, uh, <clears throat> Bob, the, the places you stay, uh, are they okay? Just beautiful. I, I, huge rooms, uh, air conditioned. Uh, Look at that. Y'all right up there by that rock. Yeah. This is the black marlin spot. Oh. We catch more black marlin. There's a rock underneath us right now. We catch more black marlin here than anywhere down. This is the Bat Islands. It's probably the best place in the world to catch anything. There's just, oh, it's scary. Sailfish. Look There's a big <laughs> 150 Look. banner right Look there. Yeah, that. right up next to these rocks. Oh. Well, the Every captain got to keep his yeah, yeah, he got to keep his mind on what he's doing right yeah, there. Yeah, we, we don't want can the you captain see sleeping. the other rocks under there. Uh, yes, it's down about 50 feet. You can see the fish on top of it. You can see the fish on the rocks, and, and then all of a sudden the fish will explode oh, as a big marauding look marlin. Look at that gorgeous fish. thing. Big sharks right there too. You can if you bottom fish for a minute. You, I caught it one shark was about 350, 400 pounds. A lot of predators. Mm. A lot of big predators. Well, where well, you got fish, you're going to have Exactly. Predators. It's a soup of, a, of life. I've never seen so many live things in one square mile of water as there is right here. And see, this, this is a varied trip because you, you're not always out. Just out Look the at that right in the back of the boat, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. See, this bad island, you go over there, it's a change of pace. It's a different Look style at this. of fishing. Isn't oh. that exciting? Oh, I mean, anybody, I don't care if you fished it everywhere, this is as exciting as it can be. 
man. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm yeah. glad to know somebody like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you coming with us next year. I'm going to give it I some serious thought. Though. Some yeah, serious man. thought. I tell you now. You, you would appreciate it. I'd love to do a little of that bottom you? fishing, too. Look Absolutely. At that. Well, see, the captain, whatever you want to do, you tell him what you want to do. You want to go skin dive down there. He'll take him to the reefs and die. Whatever you want to do. There's some man eaters around them rocks that gobble yeah. you up. <laughs> you better have somebody on your back. I like the shot. I, I like what I'm doing right here. I don't want to be in that water with you and those fish. <laughs> oh boy! Another big Pacific sail. Boy, he jumped. Right. You got to be careful right there at the back yeah, of that you, boat. Th this is a tense moment. Uh, an inexperienced angler doesn't want to get right dead on the transom here. You can get hurt. Right That's there. right. You got your man there. He knows what he's doing. We got doing. Pepe there. And, 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 watching what he was doing when that right. thing jumped up there because I've heard of people getting stabbed with Absolutely. their bills off that fish when they give that lurch in there. He's bringing him right in over the, right in the back. That little hole works real good. Yeah, the tuna it? door's handy. There you go. That fish is free to fight again another day. Great. And Bill, the accommodations there are what now? The accommodations are, are, are certainly comfortable there. We've, everybody has ocean view room. You've got air conditioning. There are two outdoor pools. There's tennis courts. Um, it's a very comfortable place. It's a family place. It is not a fish camp. It's I a got resort. You. And your phone number down yeah, there is what rooster, rooster, rooster fish. That's rooster one of the most exciting fish we catch. People come from all over the world to catch rooster fish, and Costa Rica is known for its roosters. Now, what's your phone number again? Area code 704-524-3677. Okay. That's a gorgeous fish. Those rooster fish are just, just a pretty thing as you'd there ever want to see in your life. Released again. Great trip. Enjoyed y'all fellas coming back. We appreciate it. Thank you.